What's cracking, everyone? My name is Ryan, and today I get to share my experience with the latest in the ZMF lineup, the Atrium Closeback. Now, this is a sibling to the Openback Atrium that was released last year. And before I get into this, I do want to send a special and huge thank you to Zach and Bevan of ZMF for allowing me time with this headphone in order to get this review. However, all thoughts and opinions are of my own. So I'm actually going to start right in with the build and comfort of the device simply because ZMF has not posted the technical specifications of this headphone as of yet. Now when they do, I will post those technical specifications in the details of this video. What I can tell you is that they have used the same 300 ohm biocellulose driver that they use in the atrium as well as the atrium dampening system. Now Zach just posted a video recently explaining the dampening system and how they've pretty much made that just slightly different on the closed back atrium in order to make this sound more open. And that's kind of my short term version here as well is that this is a closed back headphone that has been pretty much made to sound like an open back or at least give you the open back characteristics of that and quite a bit more on that as I get to sound. All right, so as far as build goes, this is typical ZMF. And what I mean typical ZMF is that there is some tender, loving, just attention to detail when they create this functional piece of art. And functional is not a strong enough word to tell you the sound quality, but you get what I'm saying there. I mean, there is just that, you know, really good attention to detail down to the, you know, coffee gold accents on the rods here. The wood use is a dark mahogany aged cherry by default. In fact, cherry wood is their stock option for the closed atriums. And they are going to release a limited edition olive wood at launch. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely keep your eye out for that one. The strap is a soft crescent strap on the headband. And one thing I learned about ZMS pretty quick when I got my atrium last year was you can bend ZMFs really easy. There's a video that Zach puts out to even describe how to do that. So I was able to do that with this one right away when I got it and it just fit right to my head. I had no hot spots or anything like that. You would think having these closed cups, they would be heavier. They really don't feel it. In fact, I think they're gonna be somewhere in the upper 400 gram region again uh, with this one. I think the Atrium Open was 490. And because how the weights just evenly distributed on the head and once you get it set right, it just, it fits comfortable on my head and it fits really nice and was a good comfort. The last thing I would say on the wood is the one thing that is really special about ZMFs and that wood, as you know, will age in its own way over time. And that's why they like to use cherry because of how cherry can age over time. And it truly will become a one of a kind headphone when you own one of these and that it'll just have its own distinguishable, distinguishable marks and ways to tell yours apart from somebody else. I don't know. I just think that's really cool about ZMF. And the fact that, you know, this is going to be my, well, not this one, but you get what I'm saying. This is going to be, you know, your own piece of art that you get to own and listen to over time. All right. So before I cover sound, let's talk measurements. So starting with the stock pads, now you will see they measure somewhere around four and three eighths of an inch at the widest part of the pads. Now, the adjustment post is going to be somewhere about two inches of length of adjustment here. And then going on the inside of the pad, you're going to get somewhere around three inches there on the inside of the pad. Now the headband at the top point here in the widest part is going to be somewhere around two and a quarter of an inch, probably somewhere in that region. And then finally, the cups themselves, this big massive wood cup that you get on the atrium, it's going to measure from the point that makes contact to one side of the pad to the other side over here, about six and a quarter inch. Now, if size matters for sound, now you know. I mean, that is what you thought when I said measurements, right? All right, so sound-wise, I want to let everybody know that I did start with the stock leather pads that ZMF and Zach recommends to listen on. Now, for those of you with a keen eye, you'll notice that these are actually the suede pads sitting on the closed atrium right now. So with the leather pads, and actually just to kind of tell you what I use the entire time for my DAC, I use my RME ADI-2 DAC. Now, I don't care to use the amp on that for ZMFs because they are an, a headphone that requires some power, and I don't think the 2 DAC has sufficient enough power for something like ZMFs, at least in my experience. 
So I went ahead and I plugged in directly to my Monolith Liquid Platinum, went out balanced through my XLR, and that was my first listen. And in fact, the first track I threw up was an Adele track. Now, don't ask me which song it was because I've listened to several, but I will tell you it was Adele because I remember distinctly remembering listening to vocals and thinking, wow, this is not what I was expecting. So there was good low end. I figured there would be. There was good airiness and sparkle actually up top, but I felt like I was sitting pretty far back in a stage listening to Adele. In fact, what I'm saying is that it just wasn't a brought forward mid-range, upper mid-range listen, listening to her voice. And it was interesting to where I thought, okay, I need to really put this on some other track. So I went through the gambit of my genres. I listened to hip hop, I listened to, you know, rock, heavy rock, listened to metal, classical jazz, I mean, you name it. I threw everything at this and pretty much came out with the conclusion that at least with that particular pairing, yeah, mid-range was very relaxed in that upper mid-range. So what I decided to do next was I have on loan right now the Cayenne IHA-6, which is a solid state amp that is said to be really good, at least with high impedance headphones. In fact, it's one that Zach recommends on his site. So I went ahead and I went the high impedance out of the single ended on that. Didn't use any kind of gain boost. I did have to adjust the reference level up a little bit. I think I went to plus one uh, and that was kind of my happy medium with that so I could get some good volume out of the volume pot. And really what I found there was, the best way I know how to describe it is like, you remember, you know, if you ever go to a close family member, maybe it's your grandmother, something like that, and just sitting down for some good old fashioned cooking, right? Some you know, good home cooking, something like that. That's kind of the sound I describe is that anything I listened to was again, that relaxed sound in the mid range. So that didn't really change it much, but I did get a little bit more warmth out of the low end, uh, a little bit more warmth, even out of the high end too. It's expansive for a close back in my opinion, sounded great. And I just, again, went through a lot of genres of music on this and, and just found it to be such a relaxing sound almost sometimes a little bit too relaxed in the mid-range. So I was building up to the fact that I wanted to listen to this on tubes. I have on loan the Felix Echo Mark I that Zach also recommends with ZMFs. And I didn't want to start off with that because I wanted to listen to Solid State first. When I threw these on tubes though, that did it. I, I mean, I mentioned home cooking before, right? So throwing this on the tube amp was like, a Thanksgiving dinner, you know, you've stuffed yourself full, you've had really good conversation. And I relate that to the fact that suddenly mid range was brought forward a little bit more. And I got a little bit more sense. There was no shoutiness, no harshness to it, but I could really feel the music, uh, feel it more so in that I just enjoyed that sound a lot more out of the tube amp. There was, uh, you know, as I said, the bass was was good and full and boomy, wasn't muddy or anything. It also wasn't snappy or sharp or anything like that because it's a tube, it's a little relaxed. Again, was a relaxed sound, but such an engaging relaxed sound. And I mean, it got to the point where I was just, you know, sitting back and listening and just really enjoying that sound on the closed back atrium out of the tube amp to where I finally decided, all right, I gotta switch the pads because ZMF always tells you you're gonna get different flavors with different pads. And I wanted to listen to the suede Caldera pads. That's what I'm going to talk about next. And so this is what excites me about ZMF, guys. I threw on the suede pads and I got a very different experience. That relaxation and just smooth listen just got thrown right out the window. And it suddenly became an aggressive, just in-your-face type listen. So I first listened on the Liquid Platinum once again. And I actually didn't really enjoy that synergy because it was almost a little bit too harsh and a little bit too shouty at times. I mean, there, the mid-range was definitely brought forward very much so. In fact, uh, it, was just, it was just a fun but a little too engaging of a listen. So then I went back through the Cayenne. I went back through the tubes. And I actually started going through a little bit of a flashback journey, if you will, of my high school days. You know, think of something like going to like a rave party or something, right? Like that just excitement of sound. So I was listening to, you know, Soundgarden, alternative bands, you know, old Ice Cube tracks and things like that. And just listening and enjoying on the suede pads. And I remember at one point, 
I actually put on the song Du Haas by Ramstein. Rams, if I'm saying that correctly, but I know what I'm talking about. And I'm sitting there just in my chair. My wife kind of walks by and she sees me doing this. And I'm going, Du, Du Haas. And she's just laughing. I was like, okay, yeah, the, I'm enjoying this entirely too much. If you're somebody that enjoys metal, heavy rock music or something, and you just want that in-your-face experience, man, the suede pads on this, they really did that for me. If I'm in the mood for that kind of uh, you know genre, that kind of music with this. But then I will say, even when I threw on vocal-focused music, right, and female vocalists, uh, Rihanna's new song, things like that, I was enjoying that on this as well. Even though it wasn't necessarily relaxing so much, the soothing voice was up front more, and I loved that sound. And it still retained the stage. It probably felt a little more intimate because it was more in your face, but I could definitely tell there was still that stage there. Bass was probably a little bit dialed back, a little less gusto, I would say, but it definitely was not, was not non-existent. Just a really cool listen, man, with the suede pads. Now, I don't know if necessarily this is my preferred pad on this headphone, but that's what I'm talking about. And that's kind of how I think I'm just going to wrap up this video. So let's do that next. So this is a closed back headphone that in many ways sounds like an open back. It's got good stage. It's got airiness to it. It does have good bass, so it definitely keeps that part of the closed back. The dampening system that Zach puts into place here I think is very unique in that I would say tones and notes don't really have that sharp cut off and then on to the next it's more of like a, a hit and it kind of fades away into the next one so you know if you're more of an analytical listener maybe that's something you won't like but then if you go to the suede pads you can kind of get that sound a little more so so it's very unique in that and also I would say you know talking about the leather pads Actually, this is really great for gaming too. I gamed with this headphone. I'm gonna game with all my headphones I you know, get a chance to listen to. And especially with the leather pads because you did have that space and imaging is great there. And it's kind of somewhat of a V-shaped tuning at times, I would say, because of the upper mid-range not quite being there. It really lends itself well to gaming with those set of pads for me. And then I just think for multiple genres in general, you know, you can switch out the pads and get some excitement or get some relaxation out of it. I mean, this is the special sauce that Zach and ZMF put into their headphones and something that I really appreciate because this is something different and I am all for something different. All right, one thing I am gonna tell you guys is I am gonna do a comparison video here soon with this in the open atrium as well as probably the Caldera and then maybe other closed back headphones that I either own or have heard. So definitely stay tuned for that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If so, please smash that like button. And if you haven't done so already, I would love if you subscribe to the channel because as I said, I've got more things I am going to work on. All right, guys, I thank you for watching. And until then, I will see you in the next one. Du hast.